These are the men of the London Contemporary Dance Theatre. They are performing a work called simply Class, based on the daily exercises they do. Their form of dance was created in America this century. And I suppose the most influential figure was Martha Graham, because she let down the method of training which has been very important in modern dance. Her methods crossed the Atlantic when the London Contemporary Dance Theatre School and Company were founded under the direction of one of Martha Graham's former dancers, Robert Cohen. I require for, from my dancers a, a, a kind of movement that's like an animal, a, a kind of, it's a developed naturalism. It's, it's uh, going back to the animal sense of your spine and yourself. Ruffle back and one. Drop way down back. I look for bodies that are saying something, even if they're not finished training, because dance is a symbolic language. You have to read the body as you read symbols, as you read the alphabet. And someone may be a very good technical dancer, but not be able to communicate in that way to you. The body has to be able to be expressive. Then you have to train it so that it can say something worthwhile or say something even clearer and better. But first of all, rather than technical ability itself or size or shape, has to be this ability to express. Forward. Arch. Extend out of center. Right out of the center of the body. Like a star. Out of center. Don't bend the wrist too much, see? Weight on the whole arm. Outside of the wrist. Outside of the hand. Stretch apart. Stretch apart. Stretch apart. Right leg in, and through. We have an earthiness and feet on the floor. I yell at my dancers all the time to keep their feet on the floor. It's not airborne. It's, it's, it sucks energy from the ground. You go in the air by your pressure against the earth, not because you suddenly develop wings. And that's a slightly different attitude from ballet. It isn't a, from all ballet, though, because I know the Russian training is that you go into the ground until you can jump. And that's very much what we do. And class continues in performance. We start with a solo by Patrick Harding Irma. standard has risen enormously for what the dancer has to produce on the stage. Now, as choreographers see that the dancers can produce more interesting movement and more accomplished technical movement, then the choreographers try to invent more movement. As a matter of fact, I would dare say that at the moment, the dancers are better trained than frequently the choreographers can use. And it's up to the choreographers now to be more ingenious and more inventive to be able to use these fantastically trained bodies that we are all developing. Attitudes to male dancers have changed a lot today, I'm happy to say. And this sort of contemporary work has played a very important part. Many young men have been attracted to dance by its obvious athleticism and strength.
There used to be two distinct styles, classical ballet and contemporary dance. Now the two styles are merging together because of the wider vocabulary of today's choreographers. You have to use much more anguish in the body here and really that's it, desire. Use that, use that fist here. The American choreographer Glenn Tetley had a classical training, but as a dancer worked with modern companies. And his choreography is a perfect example of the blending of contemporary and classical. You have to be at maximum lock inside the body and wish and desire here, like a huge sigh, open the whole body. I danced his ballet swings with Elisabetta Terabust. I've learned a lot from him about expression. You use your whole body because in Glenn Tetley's ballets, if you portray a character, it is through movements of the body, through choreography, there's no real emotions on the face. It's all body language, using a more supple back and more sinuous movement than pure classical dancing. Right. Peter, keep your focus absolutely. Don't watch her here. Now, unfold, Elisabetta. Unfold. Right. Use this, this movement like giant wings here. Right. Keep breathing on it. Fold the back. Lift. Huge wings opening out. Out. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Keep it stretching and breathing. Now you're going to attack him. Good. Big fire across up. And same, and ha, okay, good, that's good. It's gone, I think, to a point of, of wonderful equality now where the male dancer is a male on stage. It's not a question of virtuoso technique. It's not a question of being able to jump higher than anyone. It's um, being able to use all the qualities of, of force, of softness, of, uh, uh, of aggression, of submission, of love impulses, of torment, of being the male peacock. It's right that a man dances. <laughs>